Good morning, human beings, earthlings, YouTubistas, friends. I want to do a little history today of different people, different characters. Yesterday, my videos were about um, a PhD candidate's presentation at PSU and the gentleman giving that presentation. I gave his name a few times. Here's his picture. Here's John Driscoll. And this is at a memorial service for Nick Consoletti, who's so um, Nick, let's get his picture down here in the lower right. <clears throat> Nick was a wandering scholar of the classic kind, I guess. He uh, wandered the world, not just the U U.S. or North America, by hitchhiking. He managed to get to Europe quite a few times. The interesting story on Nick, I'll tell, well, there are many, many interesting stories on Nick. First of all, he was a great networker, so there's a lot of people um, that he got in touch with each other who needed to be in touch with each other, that he knew that because he had studied. He would go to libraries. When he landed in a city hitchhiking, he would uh, land in uh, Eugene, Oregon or something and head for the library. He also hung out in coffee shops. And he talked to a lot of people kind of randomly. He believed a lot in, like, synchronicity and the world would show you a way. He was kind of a Quaker in that sense. So the story on Nick is he wanted to meet Einar Thorstein, who was uh, kind of a follower of Fuller in some way. I never had much interaction with Thorstein, so I don't know exactly what he was into. Actually, I know something. He was into what my friend David Kosky is into, which is, let's see, I have this up. My friend uh, Russell Chu actually took my first page of Invention Behind the Inventions, which I'm fairly proud of. Uh, it's kind of old now. It's synergetics in the 1990s. I was connecting the dots as to where I saw synergetics going in the 90s, early 90s, very early 90s. It had an ISBN number and everything. So this was the first page of it here. And at the bottom, or towards the bottom, I'm going to click on Playing with Blocks, which is a section, another section of the page, quasi-crystals. Let's see, where is Playing with Blocks in this picture? Spheres of Relevance, up and down we go. So Nick wanted to see <coughs> Einar Thorstein in Iceland, of all places, he was going to, I think, find his mother in that chapter. So one time he went to Schumacher College in England and uh, was hoping to meet up with David Bohm there and, you know, the famous physicist. But that didn't work out. David Bohm passed away. Here we go, playing with blocks. And so uh, Nick never got to meet David Bohm, but he did, I think, on that same trip, continue on to... Budapest, where he became an intern at the Club of Buda Budapest, which is run by Erwin Laszlo, another key figure in in this um, time. You can do some research on him. Uh, and so Nick was a very quiet guy, though, and he would show up missing some teeth, and you know the life of a hitchhiker had been pretty hard on him. He was definitely, like, he didn't like to be referred to as homeless, but he was home on the planet and so forth. He was a wandering nomad, and he really needed better equipment to do what he was doing. So when he showed up in France that time in search of his mother, he found his mother, but uh, she, for a long time, being, she'd been like a French war bride. She'd come over to uh, New England with her new husband from World War II, and could not adjust to life in New England. She did have Nick, though, as a child, and then she took off back to France, and there she became like a, a very strong character. She was a, a mountain climber and a scuba diver and highly respected as kind of the new kind of woman who could was free and could do anything, you know, like an adventurer. And Nick did not fit her pictures at all of who her son would be. Like, he seemed too too crazy, too, like, uh, not there. 
but she got to know him, and over time she understood that this guy was, excuse me, this guy was a deep uh, thinker. And Nick was, you know, he she she could have started out proud of him from my point of view, but she didn't. And she found out that he wanted to uh, visit Einar Thorstein, and she got his mailing address. These are very old web pages, so a lot of things don't work anymore, a lot of links. Uh, Yasushi Kajikawa is another name that I should throw in at this point. David you know, has this wonderful module system where he can break down the S module, or he can break down many, many modu many volumes into um, at least mathematically equivalent to phi-scaled S modules or E modules. Now, when I say mathematically equivalent, I mean, for example, the, the dodecahedron. I asked what its unit volume was in the last video or two videos ago. Of course, I meant what is its tetra volume. And, you know, in the canonical concentric hierarchy, its volume is 6. But here we're saying also it's 126 S modules plus three, um, 30 S modules that are phi scale down. Now, that doesn't mean you can actually 3D print that inventory of S and S phi down and glue them together with Gorilla Glue to make an RD6. No, not necessarily. It's more a matter of pouring water. They're volumetrically equivalent, but that doesn't mean like when you make, when you're cooking, you can't use that cup shaped measure and, you know, fit it inside the turkey or whatever. Or maybe in that case you can, but you get what I'm saying. The shape of the volume may not be preserved as you pour it into your target shape. Or it may be. So then there's the question of when we talk about an identity, are you talking about something uh, buildable or pourable? Is it uh, rigidly true with actual modules or is it volumetrically true with, you could say, liquid or whatever? And I'm using very high precision arithmetic to verify a lot of these identities in the spreadsheet. So David's a pioneer in this area, and over time I think has established his sort of primacy in a certain way, king of the hill, in a particular obscure branch we can admit, big fish in a small pond and so forth. But he felt a sense of rivalry with Einar Thorstein to this day. Now Einar has passed away, but he also studied the modules and building blocks. And why I'm proud of my Synergetica essay is because I think I predicted playing with blocks is about how that's a big aspect of synergetics. Whoever's into, um, you know, the the E module and the T module, that's a place to put some put some eggs in that basket. And David definitely did, and I think has reaped some interesting math as a result. So I think I'm being foresightful here. Here's. Yusushi Kajikawa. Now, his work got published in the Japanese version of the Scientific American, the Japanese edition, but not in the American edition. And uh, I have some interesting, or I did have some interesting insight into Fuller's relationship with the uh, Scientific American. Uh, why was his name left out in this and that context and so forth? Uh, could go into that in another video. So there's my link to David Kosky. Let's see if it goes anywhere. Yes, it does, Kosky's Kiosk. So like I say, some of these are old links. So yeah, Nick's mother, she wrote to Einar Thorstein, who Nick wanted to meet, and said, this guy is an imposter. He's just shown up here in France, and he's pretending to be my kid. Now, they never met. Thorstein and, and Nick never did meet. I think Thorstein believed his mother, of course, that Nick was some kind of a scam artist. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank Nick for really opening my mind to what networking could mean. He he was really a master at it, but I don't want to actually be that beat up by by the world. I'm here in in my comfortable house, and I'm you know not wanting to be camping on the road and hitchhiking everywhere at this age. I did do some of that, and I, th I agree. It's kind of a brutal lifestyle. 
I am into truckers for peace, and I could see ways where citizen diplomat truckers doing trucker exchange, route exchange around the world with training and academic credit. That could tempt me out of my cave. Like I would happily go somewhere far from here just to help that program or watch that program evolve somehow, maybe as part of a TV crew. I'm interested in the documentaries that I could get from from seeing the world evolve in ways that I approve of or like. Like, why spend my time making documentaries of things that are horrible? So in the Playing With Blocks world, I'll end with uh, Graham Forscutt. He's the ex an example of someone who knows about the E-module, probably does stuff with the S-module too, too for all I know, and has taken it into sacred geometry world, which I found out a lot about from Nick. And not that Nick was really that into it, but he knew who was doing what in every every walk of life, it seemed like. So again, thank you, Nick Consoletti. And uh, so Graham Forcecut is, is carrying on with the block tradition I wanted to just mention including phi scaling. The phi thing is very important to sacred geometers. And Fuller purposefully pretty much purged synergetics of a lot of Western cultural influences, including the use of Greek letters. He wasn't into that kind of symbolization. And that's why it's not really a mathematics, because synergetics is 99% prose, not mathematical formulae, but they float around in there. And when you read synergetics, you're conjuring all kinds of mental imagery that's very geometric, which is why it's kind of a Neoplatonism, I would think. So we'll talk more. Thanks again for listening.